Okay. Can you can you all see see my screen? Hello? Okay. Yeah. This meeting is been. Is that what you're showing there? Uh, no, no, no. I am actually showing um, a, a so, so sublime text. It's still coming up, though. Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay. Uh, can you see so sublime okay, text? Okay, all right. I wrote some quotes. Can you see that? Yes, yes, yes. yes. I can see your screen. Good, 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 good. So this, this is not for you. This is a class I, I host. So now, now, um, for first of all, I want to save, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you all should have what is called um, a code editor. Code editor, right? So the one we are using here is called Sublime Text. I don't know how many of you that, ha that has it now. Do you have it? <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Charles, can you hear me? I can hear you. I will suggest you quickly take us through how to install it so that everybody can understand can what is a major requirement of this. Okay, so uh, that's why it's same, simple. Uh, let me show you how. So, um, no, you, I don't. You go, you go online. Can, can you all see my the, the browser? Can you all see the browser? Yeah, I want to see your browser. Okay. Where, where am I getting this uh, uh, noise from? An audio. Is it, is it, is it from here? Oh, wow. This is from here. Stop. Okay. So... On your browser, you search for Sublime Text Download, right? You can say for Windows. You know, Windows this platform, 10, either Windows not 10. here. Maybe from somewhere else. Yeah, I, I've seen it. It's from here. Can you all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Are you, are you. Okay, good. So you look look at my screen and then you search Sublime Text Download for Windows. So it's going to bring out this page. Then you click on, on this link, sublimetext.com. Is that clear? Are you there? Yes, we are here. I can oh, hear you. Yeah. So um, you can all see my, my screen. It leads you to this page. You look, if, if you're on Windows, if you're on Windows, you click on, already I have this so software on my laptop, so I wouldn't click on this, okay? I will not click on this. So if you're on Windows uh, 64 bits, which is what I, I expect everybody to have, you click on Windows 64, bits, then it's going to download on your lap, laptop or on your or on the system you are you are using. Okay. So once you click on it and it downloads, so you are we to download screen. Yes. Are we to, are we to download um, that very one you are clicking on? That's the best one to download. Also available as portable version. Is that the best yes. one to download? Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. So you download it, then you follow the, you do you double click on the downloaded uh, executable file. Then you click, you click, you double click it and you follow the on-screen instruction. 
It's, it's actually a graphical user in, 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 in interface. You follow it and then you, you can install it. It's not difficult, okay? Okay. So do you have any question on that? Well, um, um, can, can everybody hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I think um, your explanation is very clear enough. Um, it's not something everybody will have to start doing now. This is what they will exactly. do at their convenience during the, exactly. during the week ahead. So we can proceed. If anybody have any issues, we have a common group where they can relate the issue and then we can always give them answers to their questions on that one from the group. Very, 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 very good. Okay, so let's, let's go back. Somebody is waiting to be admitted into the room. Admin, do your job. Admit, should I admit the person? Oh, okay. Yeah, I've given you the admin right. I've given you the admin right, so you can go ahead to admit anyone. All right. Okay, so that's fine. So can all Mr. of you Charles. see... I made yes. you an admin now. So um, maybe next time I'm preparing the meeting, I will make you a co-host so that you can also present screen. But right now you have to admit anyone you are seeing a notification. Okay. 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 That, 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 that's oh. fine. Are you with that's... me? Yes, I'm with you. That's fine. Hello? I'm hearing you. That's fine. I, I heard you. Hello, admin. I heard you. Okay. Can you can, can you all see, see my, my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Good. Now let's proceed. Okay, so when you download your your code editor, as a matter of fact, there are many code editors that we have. One is Sublime Text, two is VS Code, or what we call what we call visual, 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 right? Visual Studio, Visual Studio, uh oh, what is that? Visual That's Studio Code. Very have, <coughs> you have Mr. Atom. Charles, yes. Can you let me click on record over there? I've given you the admin right, so I can't record anymore. I've not, I couldn't, I've not done that before. I. Oh. Okay. Yes. Um. Re record, record to the cloud, record to the cloud. Yes, yes, record to the cloud. Yes. Okay. So it's, All right. it's in progress now. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. So I want everybody to pay attention. Pay attention. Um, but the, the code editor of choice we are going to be using today is Sublime Text, right? So the first thing to do is to create a folder, which I have already done. Um, I don't know if if there's anyone there that doesn't know how to create a, a folder, it's simple. You 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 right click on your desktop or the environment where you want to create the folder, preferably on your desktop. Right click, then choose new. I repeat, right click on your desktop, choose new. Then choose from the drop down, choose folder, give it a name. Then you're going to save your files inside that fo folder the way I'm going to do it right now. Okay. Now, the way I'm going to do it now. So 
as a rule, as a rule, I'm hearing the noise, please. Can you focus? As a rule, your first file in your folder, in that folder is what we refer to as, as the root folder. The root folder is the folder that contains all your web files. I mean, when we say web files or your files, when we say your files, we mean your HTML files, your CSS files, your JavaScript files, and all, all have you. The folder where those files are saved or the folder that contains those files is what the folder you are going to create right, right now is what we refer to as the root folder. Good. Now, this is where you save your file. Before I do that again, it will be very interesting for you to know that in web de 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 development, your first file, which can go to this file uh, is saved as index saved as index dot ht dot ht html i just have to be recording this i have said re recording is that clear okay. good evening can, can you mute i uh, i guess you don't know you are mute you are muted can you mute yourself all right Okay, Mr. Charles. Ho, 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 sorry, I hope there's no, there's nobody that is waiting to be admitted. Let's be checking once in a while so that we won't have them wait for too long. Okay, should, should I go on? Yes, you can go on. Good. So I said the first file in your in your root folder, which serves as your home page by rule, by web development rules of engagement is saved as index file, index.html. In this case, it could be index.py in the case of Python. It could be index.js. It could be index.php. It could be index.html. But always remember that your first file, which serves as your homepage, is saved as index.html. I think I have already in the HTML in, in my roof folder, but let me save and re, 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 replace it. So uh, to save your file, you click on save as. Save as, you locate the folder you've created, which in my own case is web pro class. As you can see, can you all see my screen? Yes, yes, you can see your screen. Good. Good. In my case, my root folder is Web Pro Class. Don't mind what you're saying. I have a lot of files there. I'm going to sanitize them, but it's important for you to understand the point I'm trying to make. So we call it index.html. Already, I think I have this file here. So when you, when you, type the name of the file, you go to the second box that has a label of save as type. Then save as type means the file extension associated with the name of the file. In our case, it is HTML. You choose it and click on save. Now in my case, it say index.html blah, blah, blah already exists. I want, to re re I want to replace it. I click on yes. So my file has been saved as index.html. So now we start to study the language called HTML. Let, do not be deceived. HTML is not a pure programming la 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 language. It is not a pure programming language. It is a markup language. 
HTML is not a programming language. There are many arguments on this, but a language is not a programming language. A, a, a language is only a programming language when it is storing complete. When it is storing complete. A storing complete language is a language that has all requirements for computation. Computation. Examples of a Turing complete language, uh, examples of a Turing complete language, Turing complete language is, you have Java, you have Haskell, you have JavaScript, you have Python. Are we all there? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Good, 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 good. So now, if a language does not meet the, uh, the Turing complete requirements, it is not uh, um, qualified to be called a programming la language. So why, why am I saying all this? I want to clarify the facts. I want to clarify the fact that HTML is not a programming language. Rather, it is what is called a markup, a markup language. Language, yeah, a markup language. A markup language is used to define how documents are rendered on the browser and how they are differentiated from themselves. By so doing, by, by saying so, I mean, how do you know a paragraph? How do you know a heading? How do you know a link? If you see an image, how does it render it to the browser? That's why it's called a markup language. You know, a language capable of describing documents on the browser. Am I confusing you guys? No, well, okay. If there's any question, um, you can omit to save and ask. Exactly. So, HTML is called hyper texts, hyper texts markup language. It is defined hyper texts markup lang la language. It is called the language of the web language of the web and it is it is also known as the structural layer the structural structural layer of the progressive enhancements enhancements the reason why we call it, uh, we soon go into the details of HTML and it's not going to take, take us time, but I need to lay this foundation, solid foundation. Now, the reason why it's called the social layer of progressive enhancement is that in world over, you from a universal point of view, HTML forms the structural parts of any web site or web application, as the case may be. I like, I try to liken it like a building La last week where somebody is build building a house. A web application is like a building or a garden. You know, you have different layers of the, uh, co co of the construction. The part that involves the assembly of block and cement to give a structure is the function of HTML, which means HTML is used to build the structure, structural aspects of the web application. No matter how complex or how beautiful a building is, 
it does not appeal to the eyes or to the user when it is only block and sediment. The, the beauty of the house starts to show to the users when it has been painted, uh, furnished, you know, flowers and all that. But there is a latent idea, there is an initial idea behind the web application. So HTML is responsible for building the skeleton of the web application. And the HTML is made up of tags. Tags are, uh, tags, uh, how, how, how will I put, 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 put it now? Tags, okay, tags can, be opened, has can be opened and can be closed. Now, what we are trying to say here, hello, I hope you guys are there. Yeah, we can hear you. Good. What we are trying to say here is that HTML is made up of tags. Tags can open and close. What do we mean by tags? This is what we mean by a tag. Where the first one you are seeing, okay, let me do it this way. This is opening tag. Sorry. This is opening tag. Why this is closing? Tag. This right here on line seven is opening tag. Why this right here at the extreme part of line seven is closing tag, which means HTML is made up of tags. These tags have names and they contain combination of alphabets, alpha numeric symbols to represent what they stand for. Now, the, this is it. Some of the tags you can find in HTML, example of tags in HTML is the P tag. This is the P tag. This is, this is a paragraph. Now, on line, uh, on line, uh, line 11, can you all see, see it? Are they with me? Yes. yes. Lord, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, I'm hearing two people. I want to be sure everybody is with, is with me, please. Uh, kindly unmute yourself and and, and um, contribute so that it can continue. Can you we can all hear me? Loud and clear. Yes, we can hear you. Please. Very, good. On, please. Very, yes, good. Very good. Very good. Very good. So, somebody is entering the room by this time. Okay. Okay. So, examples of uh examples of of a uh, of um, HTML tags. Now there are many, there are 1001 tags, but the fundamental knowledge I want you to understand here is that a tag has opening and clo closing. This represents the opening, this is the closing. Then from here, this entire thing I have highlighted is what we call an ele element is what we call an L element. This from here to here is what we call an element. Okay. 
Now, other examples are of tags. Other examples, few examples of tags we have is um okay, you have the the anchor tag, you have the list tag, you have the the the, the list tag where we are, we are going we are going to do this soon. You have the headings. Mommy Paul, I will call you and we call you wait. So 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 sorry for that this this this, this distraction. Okay. So you have the, the heading tag. The heading tag ranges from H1 to H6. So enough of the talk. Let's write some HTML. Okay. So I'm going to, to remove all this on the screen while we write the actual HTML. As we are writing it, we'll be this, this describing it. And I bet you, if you put your mind to it, two days if it's enough for you to grab the fundamental concepts of the hypertext markup language, okay? Good. Yes. Good. Now let me remove all this. Okay. Now, so many people were wondering how I generated this. I'm going to show you, although I'm not used to that, but I'm going to show you. There is a bigger way to do that, but just watch. If you once you save your file as a .html file, um, the editor listens to you with what uh, can be likened as intelligence or code completion. Code completion, where once you write a symbol, the editor expects or suggests code to you that it can use to complete what it feels you are about to say or um, or the code you are about to to write so uh, um you write angular brackets less than or the what is angular bracket what is called the less than sign you write h as soon as you write h it brings up suggestion then you choose html you 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 click on the enter key or you tap the enter key this is what you have it generates what we call a basic HTML document. And I'm going to explain it from one to nine. I'm going to explain it line by line, what they do, okay? And we see how they work. First of all, this is a basic HTML document. We call this a document. If you remember what I told you, HTML is made up of opening and closing tags on line one. Now, before I go further, there are some HTML tags that are self-closing. Remember? Remember, HTML has an opening and closing tags, but some tags are self-closing. Some tags are self-closing. What we mean is that there are some tags in HTML that does not need a closing tag. If you watch on line two, you see the tag HTML. On line nine, you see where the tag is repeated, but in this case, closed. On line three, you see the tag opened, head. On line five, you see the tag closed. On line four, you see the title opened. On that same line four, 
you see the tag closed. On line six, you see the tag opened. On line eight, you see the tag closed. Then there is a, a, a funny tag I included on line, se se uh, line seven. That particular tag or what you see on line seven is a way we write what is called a comment in your code. Note this now because I will not repeat it again. What you are seeing on line seven is a way we write statements or comments in your code. The essence of comments in your code is to describe what you are writing in most cases is mostly for description, for label, for explanation, for clarity. Are we there? Yes. It's okay. So comments are used to do the aforementioned clarity, code explanation, labeling, la labeling, and all have you. So the browser neglects the comments. It does not show the comments on the browser, as we are going to see short, short, shortly. Good. Now let us start the explanation of the function of the tags, the basic tags we have here, and some of the tags we are going to add. Mind you, this night, we are not going to construct a useful website but we are going to see the functionality of most of the tags. Okay, good. Now on line one, you have a very special tag or what I can refer to as a notation. What I can refer to as a notation. Please, I said what I, Charles, can refer to as a notation. <laughs> It's not, uh, it's not the, the general accepted uh, idea. But the, the what you are seeing on line one is special. Bracket, uh, angle bracket less than sign, exclamation mark doc type, HTML. It is a self-closing tag. It does not have a closing tag. The function of this tag or notation is to tell the browser the version, the version of the HTML you are writing because of what, what is called, because of what we call, I'm going to attach it here, because of what we call backward, backward compatibility, compatibility. You know, if you are writing using the syntax, as a matter of fact, a syntax is uh, the language construction or uh, the, the, how will I put it? The, the construction, the principle behind the construction of a, of a language. In fact, the way a language should be written in the case of a programming la la language, the keywords, the tags, they constitute what is called the syntax. Okay. So in case you are using, um, a syntax that has been deprecated in HTML4. So since you are writing that syntax now, the browser have a way of recognizing that this particular keyword or syntax or tag has been deprecated. It will, it will uh, make it compatible. Let me use that word to simplify it, make it compatible with the recent uh, version of HTML. For, for, for example, there's a tag called bold. Bold, this is the tag, B. We use it to refer to bold. When you want to make an element bold, but this bold has been deprecated and be replaced with strong, strong. But that does not mean that people don't use bold. But when you use bold, it rolls it and then interprets it as what you are seeing on line five. Okay, I'm going to remove it. So the what you are seeing on line one is responsible 
for instructing the browser on the version of HTML you are using. I believe that is clear. Then on line two, of course, um, is what we refer to as the mother tag. You see, there is what we, when, when, when you graduate in this course, there is what we call, there is what we call the DOM. The DOM. The DOM stands for Document Object Model. That doc, this, this, this uh, idea explains how the document is structured. The parent tag, the children tag, in fact, the, the document tree. The first tag in the document tree is what you are seeing on line two, HTML. It introduces HTML to the browser. It says to the browser, hey, what we are writing here now is HTML. And it has a, it is the first to open. Of course, number one is there, but this is actual opening of the document and is the last to close. I want to be sure everybody is hearing me, please. Yes, I can hear you. Loud and clear. Yes. Good. Let's pr proceed. Because this, this thing is recorded, I'm going to be deleting some things because it's, it's record recorded. So you can go back and check whatever you want to check. So I'm going to, to remove this. But just know that this is called comments. Right. Now, um, that is for the HTML tag. Now, on the third, third line, you see a very special tag again. This tag is very spe special and it's good you know it in details. It's opened on line three and it's closed on line five, as you can see on my screen. And then within it is another special tag, um, the head tag and the title tag. Listen very, very, very well. The head tag contains some very special tags that you don't see on the web page or on the body of the web document, but they perform special functions like what is called search engine optimization and the site introduction. For example, this title tag that we have here bears the title of the web application you are building. You can say my first, my first, is that first? Yeah, my first web app. On the topmost part of your browser, some of you that go online, you can see like on, 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 on maybe CNN, you see CNN news. I'm just giving you an, an example. If you go to the top most part of the browser when you are browsing, you hover your mouse on the address section, you will see uh, a text to show up. That text that show up was, was inscribed or enclosed within the tag that you have on line four. It's called a title tag. The head tag contains what is called the meta tags. We are not going to look at meta tags now, maybe before the, the end of the class, or maybe by, ah, okay, okay. Uh, we maybe we conclude it by next Saturday before going to, going to CS, CSS. Okay, so meta tags have many functions, many functions that are meta in nature, which means they perform some advanced function. For example, on line four, you see the character sets that we are to be using or the standard character sets of a web document as agreed by a body called the W3 consortium or consortium as you may want to pronounce it, is the UTF-8, um, the UTF-8, that is, the way the characters are encoded. 
these are advanced sub subjects though, but we are going to introduce you to, to, to it. But I wouldn't want that to, to waste our time now. So the meta task can contain information about the author of the website and the information that this Google or any search engine can use in, in performing what is called uh, page indexing, you know, to make your page visible. Let me give you a, an, an example. In 2019, I, I used to have a school in Festac, a physical programming school. So I built the web application and then later I left, I, re I relocated. And then because I located, I actually brought the site down, you know, to rebuild and to, to do some other things. But because of the keyword I used on that site, Google is still indexing the, the page. People are still calling me till today, making inquiries that they saw my blah, blah, blah on Google. Now, the information that Google is using to make my site visible to people, although it's no more there, is contained in a meta tag. It's powerful. I'm going to show, show you how. But let's deal with first things. Uh, let, let's deal with these for, for, for first things that will form a platform for introduction. Now, a very important tag, I'll also show you that could, please note, it could be found in the head tag is the style tag. I will tell you why I say it could, the style tag. You see, most of more, more often than not, or most of the time, you may see yourself writing what we call internal CSS. Though some argue that what you are seeing from line six to line eight could be placed anywhere on the site. But I beg to differ because um, professionally, the style tag is supposed to be found within the head tag. Reason, okay, I'm not trying to, do, to introduce you in, into CSS, but CSS is called cascading style sheets and it's not heavy. So, and then in, in HTML, it moves from top to down, okay? So it's better to execute all uh, the special tags within the head tag first before you enter the, 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 the tag we are seeing on line 10, known as the, bo the, the body tag. Please, you can place this style tag anywhere, but it's professionally uh, required that if you have to write any form of internal CSS, you place your style tag within the head, head tag. The head tag actually contains a lot of things. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, I just want to be sure I have not lost you guys. Please, what, what, once in a while you unmute your, I, I, I will tell you when to do that, unmute your mouse, uh, whatever, the microphone, um, and then, let me know that you are paying attention. So I want to hear everybody's voice, please. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Good. So if you have any question, you 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 paper it down, okay? All right. So let's continue. Okay. Now, um, 
we jump into line 10. We jump into line 10, the body tag. Now, the body tag, we notice is open and close. And within the body tag is where you write all the tags that displays on your browser, the ones you see, as you are going to see it now. As I said, as I said, hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. I hear you. Okay, okay. As I said, there are 1,001 tags, but you don't need to know all of them. You need to understand the fundamental principle guiding HTML, and you can easily dynamically find your way around the, the, the tags. It is what we call intuitive, intuitive. So as I said, the body tag is where you write all the tags that appears on the web browser on your page. First of all, we will introduce the headings. As I said, the headings ranges from H1 to H6. What, uh, what is the function of the headings? Of course, as the name, let, let me put that here. Headings ranges, headings ranges from H1 to H6. As the name implies, it is used for heading, simple heading. But it ranges from H1 to H6 in the sense that the fonts, I mean the size of the text decreases as the number increases, which means H1 is the biggest in size, followed by H2, H3, and H6. Now let us demonstrate that. H1. I'm going to H2. Uh, H3, I don't want to call, copy and paste. So let's just be patient. H4, uh, are you all seeing my, my screen? Please answer me. Yes. 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 Good. You can see your screen. Very good. Now, this, this is H1. So I can call, copy and paste now. This H2, this H3, four, oh, six, save. So let us locate where we saved our file and check it out on the browser. So first of all, it's on the web pro class. And uh, I have two numerous files here. It's called index, right? Okay, I think I've seen it. Yeah, this is it. Can you also see the screen? Yes, I can see the screen. Yes, we can Good. see your screen. Good. So you, I will, you right click, open with, I prefer my Chrome. Let's wait a while. Okay. Okay. So what do you see? My first can you see? web app. Then um, you can see the URL pointing to the folder user. Then we can see the header. This is you can one. see H1, H2, H3, 4, 5, and 6, right? Yes. Do you notice as we hover? On top of this, it shows you my first web app. Yes. Now yes. that is the function 
of the of the title tag. Now, this is a demonstration of the headings. Demonstration of the headings. As I said, it decreases as the number increases. H1 is the biggest, followed by this, followed by that, followed by that and that. But the beauty of this all is that when we start doing CSS, all these rules will fail because we can use CSS to make H6 the biggest. <laughs> okay, so, but by default, by default, this is where, how it is rendered on the browser. So let's go, 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 go ahead. Now that's for, 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 for headings. Now let's look at another tag. Um, let's look at another tag, call, let's, let's call it the paragraph tag. The paragraph tag. And this is the way we write the paragraph tag. This is a paragraph. You know, as the name implies, uh, we, we all know the meaning of a, of, of a paragraph. So that's, um, that's the way we render a paragraph on the web page. Okay. So let's look at another one. Let's call it the anchor, the anchor tag. This is the anchor tag. Now, okay. Now, this anchor tag is used to create what we call a hyperlink. A hyperlink. Anchor tag is used to create a hyperlink. What is a hyperlink? A hyperlink is a kind of a link that leads you to another re resources. Resources. It could be a URL. As a matter of fact, URL means unified resource locator. It could be anything. It could be anything. It could be a web page, it could be an image, it could be a text, but it has an address. It has a link, it has a pointer. So an anchor tag is so special that it is used to create a system or a link that directs you to different parts of the web application or even outside the web application. For example, let, let us visit um, HTTP as this WW, I hope this is right, right? Is that? Um, sometimes I forget this, no, 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 I think this is it. www.google.com. Wait, let, let me be sure. <laughs> I forget. Yeah, that's it. I'm sure you're yeah, right. Yeah, I'm right. Right. <laughs> or that will be very sure. I'm coming. Okay. All right. So you write a link. You say, Visit Google. So when we look at this, we save and look at this on our page. The only thing we are going to see is visit Google. Once you click on that visit Google, it's going to direct you to Google page. That is the job of a hyperlink. Let us see, see the way it works. Uh, where's my? Okay. We reload. Okay, did I save? I 
Okay, save, save now. Reload it. Uh oh. Am I on the same page? Excuse me, one second. Let me know what's going on here. Oh, I did not save. Ah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yes. So you can see, I hope all of you can see visit Google, right? Yes. Good. Now, if you notice, you see this is a paragraph. Visit Google. When you click oh, wow. on Visit Google, it takes you to Google page. That's it. So the link tag, the link tag is responsible. Go, go back now. The link tag is responsible for moving you from one page to another. I want to introduce something again on this. Uh, I, sorry, the anchor tag is responsible for moving the user from one page to the other or from one application to the next application. There's something I wanted to show you. There's an attribute we call targets. Targets underscore blank. Now, when you add this attribute to your anchor tag, what you are telling the browser is that the Google or whichever resource you want to open should open in another tab, another tab, sorry, another tab, another tab on the browser. Let us see, see, see it, another tab on the browser. Let's see how we, how we roll. You click on visit Google, it takes you entirely to an, another tag. Do you observe that? Yes. It takes you entirely to another tag. Now that is the function of target underscore blank. All right. So let's continue and look at some couple of other uh, tags before we start to conclude. And I give you an assignment. Now, let's look at what is called the list. List. Now, note, the lists are of two types. A, you have what is called an ordered list. And B, you have what we call, sorry, you have what we call on, on ordered lists. Note this and let it never leave you. Of course, it won't leave you. Lists as a tag or group of tags, they are powerful in HTML because they are used to number items. They are used, as their name implies, they are used to list items or number items. By the time we do CSS, you see how to manipulate these tags. Where, where we're talking about presentation layer of the progressive enhancement. All right. So first of all, we have what is called the ordered list. The ordered list, is written this way, OL. You don't stop there. You add LI list. Now let me let me explain some some something here. On line twenty three, you notice how we open the ordered lists, and on line twenty five, you notice how we closed it. Then line twenty four, we included lists the list items itself. You see, the, um, the ordered list is a principle. An ordered list is also a principle. The ordered list describes 
how its own kind of list will appear. It is called ordered, which means there could be a kind of numbering, numerical or alphabetical or Roman numerical ordering. It is ordered in one, two, three, four, five, or A, B, C, D, or Roman numerals I, 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 blah, blah, blah. By writing OL as the mother tag before the children, LI, it is the OL that describes how the LI, the children, will appear. The same thing applies to unordered lists. Because you are born by Igbo uh, uh, people, you speak Igbo la language, although it's no more, it's not always the case. But because you are born a Yoruba guy, you speak Yoruba, not really, but you are, you are meant to by default. I'm not an Hausa person, but I can learn Hausa, but I can't claim to know Hausa more than an Hausa man. So the list is the children of the OL. So it is the OL that will describe to the LI how they will appear. Now I'm going to write the two and then we see the way it works on the browser. Follow me and note your questions, please. Now, example of, of an order. An ordered list, right? Then examples of unordered. Now, uh, let us just write, uh, let's use H4. H4, <laughs> say list of programming languages, list of programming la la languages. Now you notice what I did on line 25. I introduced H4 inside OL. We call it nested tags. We call it nested. Right? So you can use a tag within a tag, but you have to be careful though, not, not, not to make some mistakes, which we are, I may explain la later. Okay, so um, we want to list five different programming la 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 languages. One, two, three, oh no. So first of all, we have, okay, all right. First of all, we have JavaScript, we have Python, we have Java, we have Haskell, and we have Smalltalk. Good. The only difference between a UL and an OL, that is ordered list and unordered list, is OL and UL. Every other thing remains the same. So it is safe for us to copy this, copy it, and then paste it here. Just change O to U and O to U. And we are good to, 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 to go. You save. When we save, let us look at the browser and see how they appear. And see their, their differences too. Are we there? 
Yes, I'm here. Good. And I believe others are also there too. Ah, yeah, okay. So, um, what's this guy doing here? Get the hell out of here. Okay. Okay. Now, if you look at the OL, okay, let, let me let, let me do something. Let me just say list of programming language in ordered lists. List of programming language in on ordered lists. Save. So list of programming language in ordered lists. You notice what that I told you. The first line, the first, the OL is ordered. Ordered. One, two, three, four, five. But the UL is not, is not. You see, pom, 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 pom there. I hope we cannot see it. Yes, we can see it. Good. All right. Know what this is doing here. All right. So I, ho I hope it's clear. Good. So let's mo move on. Let's move on to other tags. So we are going to handle some maybe few 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 tags more. Um. Let us look at what is called the image tag. Now, the image tag is also a very important tag in HTML because it is used. There are a lot of tags. You can have the audio, you can have section, you have container, you know. No, you don't have con con container, please. Container is, is a class. <laughs> I, I mean to say section, not con 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 container, please. Okay. And here you have you have the nav. When, when we are doing, when we do our a demonstration, maybe try to build a web, a, a basic website. You will you will see another tag here called the header. The header tag. This header tag contains the tag known as the nav. The nav tag. Okay, but that will be for another class. Maybe before we 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 we, we, we round up. Now we say that the image tag is an example. Or another example of a self-closing tag. The image tag is an example of a self-closing tag. It does not have a closing tag. How do we write the image tag? IMG. This is a basic description of the image tag. Now you can be found on line four, 446. Now you notice the IMG, which stands for image. And by default, it came with what is called an attribute. An attribute is a keyword that is found within a tag that must be assigned a value. And that value must be enclosed in a quote. So it means that HTML tags can have an attribute. And we will see these attributes more when we start doing CSS, what is called the ID selectors and the class um, selectors. Good. Now, the first part of this tag is called the IMG which describes what the browser should look for. The second part is called the SROC, which stands for source. Source, it stands for, SROC stands for source. This source simply means 
where the image is located. Where is this image you want me to show? And preferably, this image that you want to show must live in a subfolder within your root folder called the image or IMG. We call it image, some, some may call it images, some may call it IMG. What do I mean? I told you to create a full, a full, a full, full folder. I told you to create what is called a root folder. Then within that root folder, we are going to be creating other folders. One of the folders you are going to create is the image folder. That image folder should hold all the images that are to be displayed on your web application for organization so that your images are not scattered. So the address or the path, what is called the path to where the image is, should be the value of the source attributes. Issue should, should be here. I'm going to, some of you are confused. I'm going to demonstrate it now. Now, the alt attributes is sim simply stands for alternative, where you write the name of the image, the actual name of the image. This is useful for persons with disabilities. Maybe they are blind, but they have a way of, uh, the system a way of interpreting the image that they are supposed to see. Or when you have a poor network, at least the image could not load, but the value in the alt attribute will show to tell you the name of the image that is supposed to show. Okay, enough of this talk. Let us do, let us uh, demonstrate it. Now, let me go back to our root folder. And then I already have the images folder. Can you all see my screen? Admin, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, we can yes. see us. Good. I'm happy that you all are there. Okay. So this is my image folder, which is a subfolder in my root folder. My root folder is the web pro class. The subfolder is images. I have a lot of sub subfolders though. You can see CSS, you can see JS and everything. Now, but my interest is here. My interest is here. So I open this folder to check the image I want to display. Um, I want to display this Ghana.jpg. Can you all see Ghana.jpg? Yes. Yes. Good. Can see Good. Now, let us show this image on our web page. Please note the image folder must be within your root folder so that you can declare what is called the relative path. Good. Now back to our source code. Within the source attributes, we write the name of the folder, which is, which is images, then slash Ghana dot jpeg. Uh, let's say the name of the image is a uh, Ghana logo. Let me just say it, say it. Ghana logo. So we have told this document or the browser where to find the image we want to display. Where to find the image. If, if the folder, assuming this images folder is one step out of the root folder, we do it this way, dot, dot, slash. But it is always at a safe place for the images folder to be within the root folder because you could make mistake trying to write this kind of path. 
Very good. So before I show that on the browser, let me repeat. The image tag is a self-closing tag. The SROC is an attribute which contains the path to the image. And you have also the alt attribute, which contains the name of the image. You can also have width. You can also have height. Okay, these are the attributes you can also have. But I don't really like it because I use CSS to do whatever I want to do, but I'm going to show, show you though. So let's go to the browser and see how it works. Good. Can you all see, see the image on our browser now? Yes, I can see the image. Can we see? Okay. So simply put, this is the way to add images to your web page. Remember, we are going to a web a, a, a website, so to speak. We're going to consult a website, so to speak, and bring all these things to together. But I'm going, I'm sure what I'm doing right now is to show you their functionalities, their core functionalities. Good. The next tag we are going to be lo looking at is what is called the form tag. The form tag. I am very, very sure that almost everybody here have filled one or two forms online. The, the form is responsible solely for collecting data from the user and transporting it to a data bank. It could be a flat file. It could be an RODBMS. When we say RODBMS, we mean a database, a relational database management system. It could be an SQL. It could be uh, my SQL or whatever, any type of database system. It could be a flat file like Excel. It could be, in fact, it could be anything. So far, there could be a, pro a, a protocol to move the data from the form to a particular destination. Good. Now, a form is highly important. In fact, it, it is all, almost a system you can do without in web applications. So how do we write a form? A form also um, comes in groups or in group with the form tag, sorry, with the form tag being the parent tag. I believe you all can see, can see my ice cream with the form tag being the parent tag. Good. So let us add the actual forms. We label them, we add a button. But as I told you, a building that is built with just cement and block does not appear beautiful. Admin, I noticed two people left the, the, this, this class. Or they are not, what, what, what is the issue? Do they have any reason? Okay, I don't know yet. It could be network okay. or something, yes. I would like to get their feedback, please. Okay. Good. Now, we have what is called label. Ah, what's it? Label. Label. Uh, let me say username. Uh, 
username, input tag. Now, the input tag, you know, on line 50, you see the label tag. You just, you just used to label the particular form field, form field you want to add to the form. So you can do without the label tag if you like. There are other ways. But this is the simplest way we can handle for now. On line 51, we want to add our first field for the username. And you will notice that on line 51, the input tag is self-closing. It does not have a closing tag. And there's an attribute you are seeing on line 51 now, known as type. The type attributes is what determines the content of the field, what you are allowed to type into the field. Are you allowed to type an email or password or dates or time or texts? Let us see the way it works. Then the name attribute is a peculiar value that uh, makes the content of the field unique. It's a little bit advanced, but when we are doing database um, uh, form submission, I think I will talk about the, the name attribute there. So, but, but for now, let me not co co confuse you. Leave the name attribute as it is. As I said, it's a little bit advanced, right? So because we are adding username to this particular field, what we are going to type there is text. Because our user is text, is Charles possible, is uh, whatever, blah, 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 is actually text. But I love one, another attribute I would like to introduce to you here, known as placeholder. This placeholder, or just the user to include or suggest to the user what he or she is supposed to include or input in that form field. Like enter your username here. Now, let us let us just du duplicate it, copy, duplicate, and then change the, the, the values. Um, let's create email. Let's create birthday. Let's create password. Okay. Email address. Now on line fifty three, the type is email. Please note, enter your email address or email here. It's just then password. Remember, type here should be password. And you are going to see the reason. Enter password here. Then this we are we want to collect their birthday. Their birthday was that. Their birthday. Dates. Uh, this place order may not be really hold, but let's just leave it. Choose your birthday. Are you all there with me? Yes, we are with you. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. Now, the last but not the least is an action has to be performed. And this action has to be performed through what is called a button. We now say input type. The type here is submit. Submit. 
you can put in button or you can put in so, so submit. This submit has an attribute called value. This value is what do you want the user to see on the button? We want to see register. Say it in action. Let us see it in action. Our page is becoming very long, long, long though. Somebody, okay. Somebody is coming off and going, coming on and going off. That's right. Right. Okay. Ah, how will I do this? Okay. Can you all see, 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 see the form, please? This thing cannot go off my. What is this guy doing here? But can you all see, see the form? Okay, let me make it a little bit. They are not responding, no. Yes, let me use, can see. Okay, let me use break tag. Let me use break tag to make it. Yes, well with you. All right. Oh, this this guy is here obstructing me. Okay, I know what I'll do. Let me just remove. Let me remove. I can bring this back. Let me just remove this. This should go too. So we'll have a better view. I'll bring it back, okay? And I'll send them to, 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 to you. All right. So, okay. Can you all see, see the form? Yes. Okay, so yes. if you look at this now, it is not appealing to the eyes at all. Remember what I told you? The block and the cement. They use in building a house. It doesn't appeal. It could be big. The house could be big, but it's not beautiful. By the time we finish dealing with this, with CSS, it will turn into a different thing. So, but the idea, the idea is to see the, the, the functionality. Sorry, I'm coming. Right. Now, username, you notice we can type Charles Possible here. Charles Possible, the email address. Um, okay, let, let me do some, some something on, on the form. Email address, let me add an attribute required. This required is actually a Boolean attribute. It has a Boolean value. When we say bo uh, Boolean, it could either be true or false. In this case, it is true. But by default, it is true, okay? Required, it means you cannot submit the form without writing or filling up that field. That is what require means. Okay. So if we if we click on this, it will say fill out this field. Fill out this field because of the keyword required that we, 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 we added. So you can take text, Charles possible. You can take text. E email, uh, let me just write any, any, anything I see. Then password, you notice the way password is because we, we indicated that it has to be a, pa a password. Then the dates, um, I don't know, when, when was I born? I think uh, 1920 what? 
Okay, let's just choose some, some, something there. Or you can scroll down and choose your dates. Then you register. Now, do you notice, if you look at my screen very, very well, you find out that as, as soon as I hit the register bo bo button, a warning came. A warning came from the email field. And it says, please include ask in the email, email address. Blah, 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 dot com is missing an ask. It means that we indicated type to be an email here. And we are writing another thing on the form. It will not accept it. So until we write Cosmas Mdu at gmail.com and we click on register. It, 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 it will accept, 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 accept it, it as in it will go through. Do we understand? Yes. Yes. All right. So that is a primary demonstration of the form tag. But I, I, wouldn't, I will not leave you until I show you two attributes that I have to introduce in the form tag. So when we start form submission to database, it will not be strange to you. The first attribute is what is called the method. The second attribute is what is called the action. A little bit advanced, but I'll just mention them. Now, the method, the, there are two methods, main methods for form submission. Number one method is what is called posts. Number two method is what is called gets. Gets. I will not go into details of posts and gets for, for, for now. I will not go into the details, but just understand that if you want to submit secured form to the database, you use, you include posts here. If you want to submit an unsecured data over the internet, you use gets. If you want to send a secured data that is secured, no one can see. You use posts. If you want to send an unsecured data over the internet, you use gets. I will explain deeper later. The action attribute contains the scripts. There is a script that is written in a dynamic language. It could be PHP, it could be Python, it could be JavaScript that processes the form and send the data to the database. As I said earlier, it is also an advanced topic. So I wouldn't bug you with that till we are done with, with HTML. But it's very, very important that I mention them here. Okay? Okay. I want to believe that you are hearing me. Yes, we can hear you clearly. Okay. All right. So we, are, we, have, we have less than, I think we have less than 16 minutes. So let's look at a few other, maybe three or three other um, tags. Tags, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to do table, table tag. We're going to round up with table tag by next week and introduce CSS that same week. I promise you, we are going to cover it up. By next week, we'll be done. And then we do our first project. 
which is creating a basic five page or four page website. We'll take it up from there, okay? Now, uh, I think it's time to return all these tags, but I have to, let me return, let me on, uh, do, do this. Oh boy. Right. Now let me just add this. Post. Okay. Now let, let me let me let me introduce a uh, simple simple tax more. You have the EM. You notice how we nested the D D Oh, so, sorry. The EM. The strong. Strong, yeah. Strong. Now, in the older version of HTML, the I tag, I tag, I, I is used for italics. But it has been deprecated and replaced with EM. As I told you on line 38, in a nested tag, you notice strong within H4. It simply means whatsoever that is the content of H4, make it bold, although it's already bold. Whatsoever that is the content of H4 in line 28, make it italics. The EM there means emphasis. It means emphasis. So let us see the way it works. Now, if you look at my page, I don't know if you can see my page after visit Google, list of programming languages in ordered lists. You will notice that you will notice that it is uh, in italics. Yes, good. So um the remaining time of this training, like 12 minutes, I want to take your questions if you have uh, any, um, any, any um, anyone. If you don't, we come, we, I'll tell you what to do, the assignment you are going to do, then we come back next week. Is that right? Yes, it's okay. Please, they can unmute their mic and ask me a question as fast as possible. We have 11 minutes. Okay, Akinshala, I did for you. You can ask a question. All right. Unmute yourself and ask the question. I you. I can share you. I you. you. I'm waiting for you. You're okay. your hand. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for this session. Yes. My question is Are there some tags that are self closing? Because at the beginning, you told us that um, we have closing tag and we have, we have opening tag and closing tag. But in the course of the programming, I saw that there are some you are saying they are self-closing. What's the, how do we know the difference between closing tag and self-closing tag? Okay, Adepoju, thank you very much for the question. Um, well, self-closing tag yes. does not have uh, and I, a closing tag. That, that, that's the best way I can de de describe it. You know? Okay. Now, are you on your screen? 
Yes. Okay, look at line 37. Look at line 37 and tell me what, what you line see on line 37, 37. and line 444. Yes, line 444. What do you see? Okay, on line, on line 37, I saw um, open tag UL. 44, Uncle. And on line 44, I saw close tag UL. Yes. Now look at line 446 and tell me what, what you see. Okay. Line 46 is open tag. Did you see any, open any, tag, any closing image. tag? Do you see any closing tag there? No. Good. No. So a, a self-closing tag simply does not have a closing tag. The way you will know. Okay. The way you the way you will know is that number one, there are few. Number two, the way you will know is the way I'm telling you now. Now, I'm going to send, give you a, a resource. You are going to go and check. Or uh, you can go, you can go on Google and type example of self-closing tax. For example, look at line 47. Um, look at look at this now. VR. This stands for. Can you see line 47? Yes. Yes, it's break. Uh -huh. It's also a self-closing okay. tag. Closing tag. So a self-closing okay. tag does not have an, an opening tag. Okay. Uh, sorry, it does not have a closing Thank tag. You. Okay. Thank you very much. Another another observation, sir. Another question, sir. Yes. Yes, uh, this class, can we have the recorded... Um, Copy. I, th I think you should. Our class. I think you should. The, the admin okay. will do justice to, to, to that. I, th I think you should. Okay. Mm. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Charles. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. God bless you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, to Blood bless you too. that. Um, I think for you, did you just join the WhatsApp? <clears throat> yes, I was added yesterday. Okay, all right. That's why. Uh, because Bye. the last meeting we held, yes. um, the link to the <clears throat> recording was shared. And um, I've also shared the link. This is also streamed to YouTube directly. So you can also, uh, you can always access this as well on YouTube. So there's a YouTube channel. You can okay. also get this recording from at any point in any time you want to. All right. Okay. So any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any, any other question? Okay. Okay, Mr. Charles, is it possible that um, you copy and paste all that um, all that have been taught probably in the chat box in case anybody wants to save them and then... Uh, I think I think I'm going to upload this file on uh, on the group. Okay, okay, it's all right. I, I think I think is the best thing to do so they can download it. All right, okay. all right. I think that that would be nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now, in the absence of any other yes, question, let me quickly show you a very simple thing that you are go going to do on your own. Go online and uh, visit www.w3schools. W3schools, and then, because your greatest friend will be the inter internet. Do you understand? Okay. Then, then you go to HTML. Go to HTML and read up. You can see on the left hand side, you read up uh, everything about HTML. We've covered most of the tags you are going to see there. You you read them up. Okay. Okay. Then okay. you read them up so that by next week we'll conclude on HTML. 
Okay, I'm hearing, I'm hearing the voice of a baby. Does she want to ask a question? Baby, do you want to ask a question? <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sorry. So that... Can, can you hear me? Did you say anything? No, I just said sorry. He's my baby here. No, no, no. I, I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm fine. I'm very fine with it, please. I'm not com complaining. Okay. Mm. Okay. Good. Thank you, sir. You're yes. welcome. So you read up your best, your best bet to mastering Hello. these things. Hello. Your best. Hello. Okay, can you can you tell them to keep quiet? We're back around. No, no, no. Your best bet to mastering what, what, what we've done tonight is to go and read up. Okay. Okay. I'm coming. I'm done. Uh, 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 I'm coming. All right. So um, I'll see you next week. We are going to round up HTML by next week and then conclude CSS. We're not going to waste so much time on, on CSS ne ne next week. Okay? All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very there. much, sir. Thank you very much and God bless Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank you too, sir. Okay, uh, hello. Let me just quickly check in something. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, I, I want to thank you, Mr. Charles, first of all, um, for yes. how precise, how precise he, he, he was in really handling the, 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 the training. Want to wear. Can everybody hear me? Something. Yes. Something. I think you can you mute yourself. It's like, it's only this one you have. Yes, yes. yes. Can, can you mute your okay? Okay. So can, 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 you, can you repeat? Can you repeat the question, please? Oh well, it's not a question per se. I my name is Tulu. I want to thank um, you for the precision. You were you were very precise in the, in the training. You helped cover a lot in a very short time that we have. I really want to thank you on that. And then I want to chip in this. Um, anybody because um, it is better you start practicing on time uh, so that you can follow the trend instead of living for a long time because uh, this is a lot for a beginner to, to, to digest at once. It is when you start practicing this uh, at, a, at a consistent pace, that is when you see the beauty in what you're doing. And it's not that difficult. Uh, when you do constant practicing, you understand that this is really understandable and there is nothing really difficult about it. That's number one. Then number two, I am aware that uh, or might be having one or two um, um, issues or one or two um, areas where we might be confused when we start doing things or this on our own, like setting up an, our environment, um, maybe some tags are breaking or you did something, it's not showing, or different kind of funny situations. So we have a group already, a WhatsApp group. You can always put your question there at any time, any time of the day, even if it's in the midnight. Um, we have, uh, we'll be there to answer your questions accordingly. Thank you very much. All right, that's, that's, that's nice. That's nice. Thank you. Okay. So in the absence of any other thing, we, we call it a day. Please go to the link I sent to you. As he said, do a lot in programming. Practice makes perfect. Do a lot of practice. Ask your questions. We'll see you next week. Okay? Thank you. <laughs>